Let's work on analyzing combined sets of spectra. In this video, we're going to have sets of IR and mass spec data that correspond to the same molecule. So we have an IR and we have a mass spec. They both correspond to the same molecule. And we're gonna come up with a reasonable structure for the molecule. So the strategy that we're gonna take when we're solving these types of problems, number one, is come up with the molecular formula. And we've been practicing that using mass spec data. Once we get the molecular formula, then we're going to calculate the HDI. And then once we get the HDI, we're gonna figure out uh, what kind of functional groups we have present based on the IR. And then we're gonna put all of that together to make a molecule. So it will be done. The molecular formula, as you know, we're gonna get that by you know taking our, our mass spec data and using the rule of 13 coming up with a formula. The mass spec is gonna tell us if we have nitrogen, chlorine, or bromine present, but don't forget about oxygen. Oxygen atoms are pretty common in organic molecules, and oxygen atoms don't appear anywhere in the mass spec. There isn't anything there to let us know that we have oxygen atoms present. So our first job is to really quickly scan the IR. We're not doing a full-blown IR analysis at this point. We're just quickly scanning the IR to determine if we have any oxygen in the molecule. And I can see that we have this peak right here and that's located around 1700, a very strong peak. It is a little bit spikier than normal, but it's very strong, which tells me that we do have a carbon oxygen double bond. So we know that we have oxygen present. We're gonna to need to keep that in mind when we come down to our mass spec working on the molecular formula. So knowing that we have oxygen present, now we go to the mass spec and we look for our other atoms like nitrogen, bromine, chlorine. Bromine and chlorine are usually really easy to see. We can see in this molecule here, we don't have any M plus two peak. So that means we don't have chlorine, we don't have bromine. Nitrogen is visible to us if the M plus peak is an odd number. This M plus peak is at 86. So there's no nitrogen present. So we have a molecular weight of 86 grams per mole. We have oxygen present. And now we can go ahead and use this information to help us come up with the rule of 13. When we know that we have a hetero atom like oxygen or nitrogen or whatever, we have to begin by subtracting the mass of that atom from our molecular weight, because the rule of 13 only applies to carbons and hydrogens. 86 minus 16 is 70. So 86, this is the total mass of the molecule. 16 is the mass of the oxygen. And then 70 is the mass of the carbon and forgot to write oxygen. 70 is the mass of the carbons and the hydrogens. And then with that, we can use the rule of 13. So we're gonna do 70 divided by 13. That is 5.38, we're gonna round that to five, five carbons. So we have five carbons and we have one oxygen. And now we're gonna use the five carbons and the one oxygen to figure out how many hydrogens we have. Total mass of 86, one oxygen atom, five carbon atoms, 86 minus 16 minus 60 gives us 10 hydrogen atoms. Um, so this is our first proposal at the molecular formula. We will immediately know if this formula is reasonable or not when we calculate the HDI. So let's do that next. If this formula is unreasonable, our HDI is gonna come back just a crazy number. Our HDI is the number of carbon atoms times two plus two, which is 12. And then we subtract the number of hydrogen atoms that we actually have. We have 10, so that leaves us with two. And then we divide that number by two is an HDI of one. So that means we have one double bond. That's a really, or, or one ring. That's a super reasonable HDI. So we feel really good that this is an accurate molecular formula. Everything here looks great. Um, now let's take a look at our checklist here. Come up with the molecular formula, calculate the HDI. We did that. Now let's look for functional groups. Looking at this IR, we've already identified a carbon oxygen double bond and that corresponds to an HDI of one. So that means that we just need to come up with a molecule that has five carbon atoms, 10 hydrogen atoms, and one carbon oxygen double bond. We could propose a few different structures. Um, looking, at, looking at this guy, so there's a possibility that the 
double bond is at the end. Looking at these two peaks right here, it does kind of look like we have an aldehyde there. So remember, an aldehyde is going to show us a couple of small peaks in this area. So this, um, this is a very reasonable structure right here. These are all three pretty reasonable structures. Um, I guess we could come up with uh, like a branched ketone. That If we wanted to spend a lot of time analyzing the different fragmentation in the mass spec, we could probably start narrowing some of this down. But I think just coming up with these four possible structures and then taking these four structures to a database like SDBS or NIST help us verify exactly which one it is. This is definitely a, a good place and all of these are reasonable. Let's look at a second example. So again, our plan first, we're gonna look at the IR just to look for oxygen atoms. And it looks like, again, we have another carbon oxygen double bond. So we'll keep that in mind when we go down to the mass spec. In the mass spec, we wanna find our M plus peak, this 86 again. Calculate the rule of 13 again. Uh, we kind of don't need to because we've already done this, but we'll go through the motions just to give you practice. So when we know that the molecular weight is 86, the first thing that we're going to do is subtract the mass of our hetero atoms, our oxygen in this case, which brings us down to 70. And that's the mass of the carbons and the hydrogens in this molecule. 70, we can use the rule of 13 to figure out how many carbon atoms we have. And then once we know the number of carbon atoms, we can subtract the carbon atoms as well as the mass of the oxygen from 86 to give us the number of hydrogen atoms, 10 hydrogens. So our molecular formula is C5H10O. Uh, and then once we have a molecular formula, we can go back up to the IR and come up with a proposed structure. So when I'm looking at this one, so both of these, this one as well as the one that we just did, they both have the exact same molecular formula. And when I look at this one, I don't see those little peaks like we saw in the last one. I thought hmm, maybe that means we have an aldehyde. Looking at this IR, you know, thinking back to the one previously, I feel, I wanna go back to that IR. I feel super confident that this is actually an aldehyde peak. Um, so I wanna erase this question mark. And I also want to erase these structures because, like I said, I feel really good about saying that this particular molecule is the aldehyde. Now, it is possible um, that it could be a branched aldehyde. So it could be like this right there. Um, but I do feel I do feel really confident that we have an aldehyde. Not in this molecule. This molecule I feel super confident is just a ketone. So this guy or this guy, or it could be a four carbon ketone with a branch on it like that. And again, we could narrow down exactly which one it is, possibly by analyzing the fragmentation in the mass spec, but it's probably a faster use of our time to take these structures and go look at a database and see if we can figure, figure it out, match them up. Let's look at another example. Hopefully this one has a different molecular formula. So we want to start with um, our IR looking for functional groups. We do not have a carbon oxygen double bond in this situation, not this time, but we do have this peak right here, which is going to correspond to an OH group. It's pretty pokey. It's not really as broad as we normally see, but it's, there's an OH group there. Uh, and so knowing that, knowing that we have an oxygen in the molecule, we're going to come down to the mass spec with that information and get a molecular formula. When I see this mass spec, I also, boom, right away see that I have bromine present. So not only do I have oxygen, but I have some bromine as well. Uh, and we're going to use that information to get us a molecular formula. This is going to be my M plus 2 peak that corresponds to my bromine 81. So that means that this is going to be the M plus peak that corresponds to my bromine 79. And the mass of this peak is 75, 74, 73, 172 grams per mole, 172. So with my 172 grams per mole, I need to subtract the mass of the oxygen that we see in the, in the IR. 172 minus 16 is 156. 
And I also need to subtract the mass of the bromine 79. And I'm using 79 for bromine because I'm using the molecular ion peak that corresponds to the bromine 79 isotope. 156 minus 79 is 77. So 172 is our total mass. 16 is the mass of the oxygen. 79 is the mass of the bromine. And then 77 is the mass of the carbon and the hydrogen in this molecule. We can use 77 to apply the rule of 13. 77 divided by 13 is, ooh, 5.9. So this is a tough one. Should we go with five carbons or should we go with six carbons? Um, you should always round down. It's just always what you should do, even though it we're at almost six. We'll know really quickly if we shouldn't use five and we should instead use six. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with five. 172, I'm gonna write down over here, C5, H actually, we're going to calculate C, 5, H, we don't know how many yet, B, R, O. Um, to figure out how many hydrogens we have, we're going to go 172 minus the 16 for oxygen and the 79 for the bromine and the 5 carbon atoms, 5 times 12. 172 minus 16 minus 79 minus 5 times 12 is 17 hydrogen atoms. That's way too many. That's way too many. We can't have 17 hydrogen atoms on five carbons. Let's pretend like you just, you know, couldn't easily intuitively tell that. Let's go calculate our HDI for C5H17BRO. C5H17BRO. Five times the number of carbon atoms. Five. The number of carbon atoms times two is 10. Plus two is 12 minus the number of hydrogen atoms that we actually have is a negative five, which is not possible. You can't have a negative HDI. So because of that, we know five is the wrong number of carbons. C5 is the wrong molecular formula. 17 is the wrong number of hydrogen atoms. All of this is wrong. We're gonna go with six carbon atoms. That is going to be accurate. C6, H something, B-R-O. We're gonna repeat this calculation, 172 minus 16 for the oxygen, minus 79 for the bromine, minus six carbon atoms, each at 12. 172 minus 16 minus 79, minus six times 12 is five hydrogen atoms, a much better number, C6H5-B-R-O. Let's get our HDI on that for C6H5BRO. Six times two is 12, plus two is 14, minus the number of hydrogens that we actually have, which takes us down to nine, minus the bromine takes us down to eight, divide by two gives us an HDI of four. Whenever we see HDI of four, that usually means that we have a benzene ring in the molecule. Let's go see if that's um, consistent with our IR. Uh, we ha do have a carbon-carbon double bond, and we really don't have anything going on in the carbon-hydrogen area, so all of this is consistent with a benzene ring. So let's draw a benzene ring, and what else do we need on this molecule? We need one bromine and one oxygen. So let's stick an oxygen right here, and then maybe we'll stick the bromine right here. And we don't really know where these two groups are on the molecule relative to each other. So it could be maybe they're opposite each other like this, um, or maybe they're just one carbon apart. All three of these are reasonable structures for this molecule. We've got one more to go. One last example. So first thing that we wanna do, look at the IR to see if we have any oxygen atoms, which it looks like we do not. Um, this, no, nothing going on here in the carbon, carbon oxygen area and nothing big over here for an OH group. So we're gonna head down to our IR. Um, this looks like, this is kind of tricky uh, in terms of a uh, molecular weight. This looks like our M plus peak right here. 
and this is at 73. So that tells us that we have a nitrogen because it's an odd number. It tells us that we have a nitrogen in the molecule. Let's figure out the formula. 73 minus 14 for the nitrogen is 59. Um, again, 73 is our total mass. 14 is the mass of the nitrogen. 59 is the mass of the carbons and the hydrogens. Now we're gonna use 59 to apply the rule of 13. 59 divided by 13 is 4.5. We'll go with four carbons, C, four, H, something, N. Figure out how many hydrogens we have. 73 minus the 14 for the nitrogen minus our four carbon atoms at 12 each. 73 minus 14 minus four times 12 is 11. Let's see if that's a reasonable formula. HDI will always confirm whether our formula is reasonable or not. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, minus 11 is negative 1, but don't panic because with the nitrogen we add 1, plus 1 is 0. So we have an HDI of 0. That's perfect. C4H11N. Now let's go back up to our IR and come up with a formula. And I'm going to, uh, or come up with a structure. I'm going to copy the formula up here. So we have it handy. There isn't really a lot going on in terms of functionality in this molecule. The only real thing that we can look for is um, the NH peak. So if we had an NH bond or if we had two NH bonds, we would see peaks in this part of the spectrum corresponding to those NH bonds. And since we don't have any peaks over here, that tells us that our nitrogen does not have any hydrogen atoms on it at all. So that means that all of our carbon atoms are attached to the nitrogen. So this is really the only, it looks so funny the way I'm drawing it, I gotta redraw it. Um, it's the only real structure that's reasonable is if we have two methyl groups and one ethyl group attached to our nitrogen.